This is David Sable back again for New York Festivals and Creativity from the other side when we talk to some of the greatest creative leaders in our industry and creative people from all kinds of industries to learn what makes them creative, what turns them on, what gets their juices going. And today I am so happy and excited to talk with my latest FOD, friend of David, Miles Lord, who is the managing creative director of Service Plan, one of Germany's primo ad agencies, a creative hotspot, and certainly since he's gone there to Berlin. And by the way, he's sitting in Berlin. I'm sitting in New York. It's night for him. It's morning for me. And so, Miles, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a real honor. Well, I don't know about it, an honor, but definitely an honor for me. But let's let's get right into it because just let's first just tell us a little bit about COVID and Germany because we've been sharing the experience of COVID with all the creative directors, many of them from many different parts of the world, just to give everybody a sense of how it's affected you, how it's affected your family, your business, the company. Well. Um, I think the first thing to say is that I'm still at home and uh, Berlin and Germany is still sort of pretty much in, in lockdown. We're, we're opening slowly. Um, we're slow with the vaccinations, but um, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. But in comparison to other countries, we, we're actually quite behind. And this has been strange in Germany. Germany is normally so jacked up and so ahead of the curve in so many ways. In fact, I'm... Oh, wait, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of, we, we, I think we're the first or the second to, to, to develop a vaccine as well. Um, but it, yeah, it's been, it's been hard. Um, uh, it's also been hard with my family being in, in South Africa. Um, and, and obviously, like the, the pandemic there versus here. I mean, these are two different stories. Um, but one thing we found, I think, um, you know, when, when it hit, um, it actually hit in uh, in our office um, pretty early on. Um, so we, we had a case and we were one of the first companies to sort of go into quarantine. Well, well to have floor, a floor of our office go into quarantine. And this was, yeah, the, I mean, it, it, it sort of set a, a pretty pretty scary precedent right in the beginning. And um, yeah, and it was, it was quite weird to see how we managed to sort of transition our, our work uh, the way we're working, like from from a sort of physical analog face to face around a table way to this to this way to this digital way, really quickly and um, and of course it, it, we we started to work in a new way and we, we still don't know which way is better but the the new way was quite a lot more collaborative we'd actually work we'd have these live sessions with clients where it'd be like brainstorming and working out the details um, pretty much like on a screen where you know everyone was able to, to to share the document and work with the document and this this was kind of new and um and we thought it was going to be a disaster but actually life life went on uh work went on um and we were able to yeah to to sort of you know start this home office thing although i think it was really hard for the families of advertising people because um it's somehow it is quite cool to work from home but it's not cool to bring an ad agency into a house with children <laughs> Um, right. and my kids, my kids were immediately like, dad, you swear so much when you work, do you know this? <laughs> um, so yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's been that. a really, a really hard time. We've, we've, we've managed to endure the business has been tough. We've worked harder, longer, uh, more intensively than ever. Um, but as we say, we see the light at the end of the tunnel and, good. um, I think yeah, it up, yeah, good. Well, we certainly we certainly wish you the best and, and we do look to the light at the end of the tunnel in Germany and elsewhere around the world. You know, I think you brought up a lot of interesting points and maybe we'll get into some of them later, but this notion of collaboration online. And it's interesting that you brought clients into it because I do believe that that is actually one of the things that has happened. We've heard this from others as well, that because, you've, because of the situation, clients have participated in more meetings than before. And so there was less of, wait, we're going to show you the big idea and much more of that collaboration and working together to, yeah. to get there. So I think that actually is, is one of the interesting outcomes of all of this. Yeah, absolutely. And also um, Service Plan used um, the sort of break in travel um, to, to become completely carbon neutral as a network, um, which is amazing. So, I mean, obviously yeah. we weren't allowed to fly, but 
um, to, to, to use this opportunity to sort of freeze this and to, to use uh, digital um, conferencing and, and video calls instead of, you know, you would always jump on a, on a plane and go to the client and then they would tell you what to do and you'd go home and do it and come back. And um, yeah, and now the, the, the sort of new work system um, is better, I think, in, in some ways across the board. And, and yeah, for service plan to be completely carbon neutral and, and to keep that now, um, this is really um, a kind of positive, positive outcome, I would say. Good. Well, we look forward to, to learning more and hearing more from your experiences. I think those are things that need to be shared. But let's let's just get back to Miles and just talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So let's first just about the scene in Germany. So I've spent a lot of time in Germany um, making acquisitions, looking at some of the, the great companies. And, you know, you have worked in some of my absolute favorite companies, uh, Springer and Jacobi, Heimat, oh my God. Um, really, just some of the some of the great, great creative agencies, DDB, um, which you helped turn into absolutely um, one of the most creative agencies in the world, and it's been awarded in in various places uh, as Cannes as well as New York festivals. So, you moved to service plan, not necessarily known in that same area. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, actually, the service plan is um, probably most famous for innovation and, and sort of sort of being outside of the box of advertising, not just creatively, but coming up with things like you know the 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 Braille uh, smartwatch, the dot watch, and things like this, where which are like way way beyond what a normal ad agency would would kind of busy themselves with. Um, why did I end up at service plan? Well, actually, the the thing is. When I arrived in Germany after working eight years in South Africa, I arrived at Spring and Jacoby, and um, and uh, yeah, I met Alex Schill, um, who's and and uh, Matthias, Matthias Harbeck. They were like my first bosses, and uh, the reason why I joined Service Plan is because of them. So I went from 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 Spring and Jacoby to to Heimat, um, and uh, and then to DDB, and then kind of back to where I started. Um, and it's it's great. Um, they they basically said, you know, we need uh, we, we want to build an advertising offering in Berlin, um, like a true classic advertising offering. So I had a chance to be an entrepreneur, um, uh, which is I guess a part of uh, my skill set that needs to still be developed. I'm I'm pretty much a you know creative guy and art director. Um, and uh, yeah, and so the chance to to sort of build something and grab a bunch of people together and say, you know. What, what is the dream agency you always wish you could work at? And keep that in your mind because we, we're going to build it. You know? So you know, it's a blank piece of paper. Whatever you want it to be, we'll make it. And, um, and that's where, yeah, that's how we started it. And um, yeah, we're, we're fighting in, in, in Berlin, which is a, a smaller scene, um, funny enough, a, a very creative scene, but a smaller scene than the rest of Germany. Um, but it's just lovely to be uh, in Berlin. This is really a place that... Um, makes me feel home. I mean, as you know, I, I come from Cape Town, and um, one of my favorite places. South Africa. Um, back in 1989, we were watching TV, and we saw the wall come down in in Germany, in Berlin, uh, in November of 1989, and we thought, "Wow!" I mean, imagine that. Like, wow. <laughs> and uh, in January of the next year, Mandela was released from jail. And uh, when I came to Berlin, I felt this similar feeling. I mean, our, our democracies or our revolutions or our, you know, change or our walls, both of our walls came down within, you know, just a few months of each other. And funny enough, actually, the South African labor law is a copy paste of German labor law. So, and a lot of the constitution of Germany and, and South Africa um, resembles each other. And that's why I met my wife. Um, who was studying law in Cape Town or German law in Cape Town? Um, yeah, and that's kind of that's why I came to Berlin. So it all comes um, together. Yeah. Let's let's just yeah. focus on Berlin for a second. So Berlin, and, and you have written about this. You've talked about this before. The notion of creativity and innovation, and you just used it again when you said service plan was known as a more of an innovation place. You come yeah. from the creativity side, so hold the thought. Berlin is also a center of huge creativity slash innovation. Lots of startups, lots of interesting things happening there. 
So how do you view the difference between creativity and innovation? Is one a derivative of the other? Are they separate? Do they meet? That's a great question. Um, actually, they're one and the same um, because ultimately creativity is problem solving. Um, the, the, what comes out at the end is potentially design or advertising or uh, architecture or you know, interior design or software or an app or you know, a business model. Um, so yeah, that, that's what makes Berlin really amazing. This, this um, Berlin, they, they call, uh, they have this, this um, way of describing it, Aram aber sexy. So poor, but sexy. Um, so it's not a huge industry here, but there's a lot of amazing people that are starting up their thing. They're starting up companies, startups, artists that are you know, emerging, bands that are emerging. Um, so as a creative person, if you, if you want to produce something um, outstanding, uh, a piece of advertising, piece of communication, you, you have on the one side street artists, which are incredibly talented, fine artists. You've got people writing code. You've got uh, innovators. Uh, you've got people that you know, are 3D printing or whatever. Um, so there's a huge, um, yeah, there's like a huge sort of melting pot of of, of creativity, of innovation, of technology all around you. Um, so you can do amazing things. Um, and it's a, great, it's a great place. But of course, these people are, um, they're sort of young and hungry and available and, and trying to make a name for themselves as well. So you can do some, some pretty, pretty amazing stuff here. Great. So let's, let's keep continue following that thought down. So again, so you're in Berlin, you're surrounded by all this creativity, all this innovation, these amazing people, these young people. But you also talk about the atmosphere in service plan where you can pull together inside your own little sphere there of PR and performance marketing and content and digital and media and shopper. And you talk about that and the power of that. So that seems, as you talk about it, it seems as if it's something new for you in your experience versus what you've had in the other agencies. Sure, sure. Um, in the in the other the other agencies would um, they would have these departments, but they would always under be so, uh, be under one um, sort of one one um, uh, one company. But in in service plan, what you have is a lot of cells. So each one of these cells is, is its own company, and instead of having an agency, so to speak, they have a thing called the House of Communication. So, uh, so that's in Berlin, the Berlin House of Communication. Exactly. So and in there we have these cells you know we have people that do social we have people that build websites we have people that do pr people that are are, are experts in the political communication people that are experts in shopper marketing exact um etc and they're not on on your client's payroll so to speak but if if and when you need that specialist you literally open the door and say you know can we can we bring you to the table so it's a very modular it can be very modular project by project but the great thing is you don't have to um employ these people you know you don't have to be the, the agency that wants to or sell your uh, a client a website as well as a whatever a tv campaign because you need to pay these people um so you can, and this goes across the network in, in Germany and, and the network worldwide. So, um, and that's a great thing about, yeah, service plans, modular approach. There's always an expert, um, the exact expert that you need um, that's in-house in a way in, within the network. And that's, that's really great. Uh, that's a, that, 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 that is probably one of the engines of innovation and, and growth for, for, for service plan, for sure. Love it. So I hope everybody's paying attention to that because we all talk about that. It is a holy grail. And, you know, many of us who come out of the out of larger agencies that, that own multiples or in the holding companies, that's always the biggest challenge is how do you bring these to the table in the right way for the client? And I, 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 the notion of looking at it as innovation is actually quite interesting and, and I, I think very empowering. So that's, that's great. Now, you're in a very competitive environment, uh, as you say, I mean, Berlin, um, and again, Berlin is a smaller market, although there are companies out of Berlin that have had a bigger impact across Germany just because they're really creative and, and they've managed. We also know that in Germany, the competitive environment is incredibly hot because there are so many good agencies. And interestingly enough, I think DDB is one of the, one of the outliers in the sense that most often the global agencies get very little traction in Germany. It's just one of those markets that 
it's the you know the the Springer and the Colbys and the the Heimats and the the Kolarevs and the whoever manage to manage to to get most of the business and the bigger agencies tend not to be quite as famous or quite as well known. But one of the things that, that you talk about, which I'd love you to just, which I'd love you to go, sorry about that. I should have turned that off, but that now you know that my, my music choice is uh, as it is. I, I didn't get it, I didn't get it. <laughs> it was the House of the Rising Sun. So classic. Um, classic and it just kind of gives my age away. But one of the things you talk about, which, which again speaks to me personally, because I do believe in this kind of stuff, you say the pitch is one with one slide. Now, for the agencies that walk in with the four hour deck and you know, 600 yep. pages of whatever, the pitch is one with one slide has got to be an instructive something to share. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we. We tend to babble and we, we tend to build these long ramps and ladders and um, streets, as they call them as well in, in Germany. Um, but ultimately, there's going to be, yeah, there's that one slide, which, which means, in fact, before it becomes a slide, it's a post-it normally. It's normally just a sentence. And, um, you know, if it, it, for example, my favorite sentence is like, the man your man could smell like. I mean, there you go. And if, if someone walked out of that pitch or, or, or that meeting and their, their boss called them and said, like, well, you know, what's the idea? And they could just say, it, you know, that's that one slide. And it, it's something that people can easily communicate. Um, they can speak of it uh, to, their, to their boss, to their superior. Um, to, we could say, you could say it to the director and they would go, yeah, I got it. And of course, you could say it to, to the consumer. I mean, they're, they're probably seeing, imagine how many <laughs> statements uh, an average consumer is seeing every day through all these different types of media. And if you've got that, if you've got your 10 seconds or your 20 seconds or one hour or whatever to pitch at a consumer, I mean, they also really only have the capacity for that one, that one statement, that one slide. So, yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's often difficult to get to, to that one slide because a lot of, a lot of what we do is really built in complexity. You know, um, people want to go to the, the, you know, the clients want to go to the consumer and say this and this and that and that and that and, 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 and. Um, but ultimately what, what convinces them is that one thing. That so one? we, we, we strive for the one slide or the one, the one, uh, the one poster. Does everybody hear that? It's the one slide. It's the one thing. What do you want people to remember when they leave the meeting? Not that you show them 600 pages, but to show them one that caught their attention and gave them something to talk about when they when they left the meeting. That's great. So let's just, before we get into specific creative, I just want to dive just a little bit deeper into Miles Lord, the person. And Miles, you and your family have an NGO. And you That's support right. you support important causes in South Africa, education and AIDS orphanage. Tell us more That's about right. it. Well, it actually came down to um, to our wedding, actually. So, so my 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 wife and I, we decided to get married in Cape Town, which is just it was, it was fantastic. And then you think like, oh, all these wedding gifts, and you know, uh, this is like we don't want people to bring wedding gifts. So we just said like, please don't bring a wedding gift. Please, if you want to, you know, do something, give us uh, a donation. Um, and uh, I won't say to who because um this is quite controversial um and we basically we had um all these all this money and all these donations from our friends and our family and the people we loved and we went to this um to this charity that we wanted to and um they weren't really interested in our money and we're like wow this is crazy they have obviously so much donations coming in and we went around and around and around looking for a place a, a meaningful place to put these donations. And after a while, we realized that the NGO we were looking for, we couldn't find. And we decided to make it. Um, and uh, we decided to use the, the money that was from our guests and our, and our family and friends as a sort of starter capital to build up this NGO called Sia Bengazela. And Sia Bengazela is, um, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a statement which can be understood in Kosa and Zulu. Um, and it basically means we are shining. And in terms of the language, which is very descriptive, it's shining like, like the stars. 
which is which is um, something yeah uh, which, a name that was given to us which we which we really love and what we decided to do was actually when we decided to build our own NGO um, we, we don't really know anything about this but we started to see people on the ground that were doing stuff like um, university students that were teaching reading and writing in English um, we saw this aid, AIDS orphanage um, with this um, yeah in Kailicha. Um, and we saw all the problems and we saw um, grassroots organizations that were actually really making a difference. They weren't these huge charities on the internet with, you know, bank account numbers and, uh, and fancy uh, four by fours and lovely logos. There were people that were really working inside the community and then they were doing, they were making a difference. So what we do is we, we channel funds to these, these um, organizations on the ground. And um, what we do normally is we go to Cape Town and we create art with young people in the township. We bring this art to Berlin. We put it in the fancy Berlin art galleries. As you may know, David, uh, from your trips to Berlin, Berlin loves art. Yeah. And we tell the stories, especially very important, the stories of the art. And, and we introduce them to the makers of the art. And then we sell out mostly from our, our shows. And we take the money back to Cape Town and repeat the cycle. Um, so creativity is at the core of Sia Bengazela. Um, but um, with the other thing we, we also main, well, the other thing we do is the kids that are part of our programs that are creating the art actually do not benefit directly from the money. So they also are working for us or working for the communities in a charitable way, so, which is really nice. So um, lots to learn. And I think as a, as a person that grew up in a, in a let's say, a very privileged uh, environment to go into these areas and to see the poverty um, and to see, but also at the same time to see the spirit of the people, um, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 how the community works together, um, how they feel responsible for each other. Um, I always leave the, the townships feeling uh, totally, totally amazed and, and overwhelmed. Um, and so, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a bridge for us between between Germany and South Africa, between Berlin and Cape Town. And um, I think all the people that have traveled to Cape Town, they've they've seen these townships, they've seen the, um, a, a side of Cape Town which they didn't really know, um, and they never really got to know. And and through Sia Bengazela, we also take people in through with our film work, our documentations, uh, with our photography projects um, and kind of open it up to people. And um, yeah, then they're, they're actually then able to see the whole of the whole of Cape Town. So yeah, we've learned a lot about, uh, about creativity, a lot about, about uh, yeah, a lot about the human spirit. And that's exactly um, what it's very inspiring. From, and that's exactly what creativity from the other side is all about. It's to learn these things. I mean, here you are taking what you do for a living, the, just the very notion of creativity, and applying that problem-solving thinking to societal problems. And it's just so inspiring. So thank you for sharing that. And I hope that everybody else is as inspired as, as I am. And, you know, takes away, takes away less from that. But that segues us into more creativity and just talking about Miles Lord and the creativity that you've experienced and shown in this industry. And so I'm going to start with, even though we're New York festivals, we have, we have, uh, you know, big, we have big shoulders and we, we welcome everybody. And so there is a, there's another festival, the Festival of Lions um, in Cannes, and you won your very first lion for CNN. And you gave an interview and was so interesting in the interview and that I took out of it is I listened to you talk about collaborating with clients today as a result of COVID your whole story was about collaboration with your client that led you to win a lion with the client. Right, right. And it's very think, un unusual to hear people talk that way. And it was, it was just a, yeah. such a great little story. This was, um, I, I think the, the one thing, someone asked me the other day, if you could go back and whisper in your ear like 25 years ago as a young creative and you could just kind of just say something. And um, to, to your former self in a client presentation, what would you say? And the answer to that um, was, it's not your idea, it's the client's idea. Um, and we always think like, oh, the creator's like, oh, the guy ruined my idea, or she changed it, or oh, she didn't get it. And 
um, I think the learning is actually that it's not your idea. You're actually making it for somebody else, for another brand, for another, another person in right. the team. And if you give it to them and if it's theirs, they will fight for it harder than you ever could. And they will take that idea further than you ever could because they have money, <laughs> they have the brand, and they have just one person to convince their boss. Um, and, and this is something I learned uh, yeah, back in the day with CNN. And I think um, what, you know, we, we made it, we made a plan. We said, we want to go to Cannes with CNN because, you know, Cannes is a huge media festival as well. You know, the, the, you know, the whole world is watching uh, the, whole in, the whole industry, the whole media industry. They get this book on their desks. They watch the Cannes reel. You know, this is like prime real estate for media. And this is a prime spot. And we said, you know, it, it, it's like the, one of the hottest media placements in the world. And it only costs $300. <laughs> and you reach the world of, of, of media and marketing. So that's, that was our kind of goal. And at the end of uh, the year, as I said in, uh, in the interview, the client called me and said, I, I don't see us on the short list. Like, what happened? I'm like, no, we, have to, we actually have to do really good work. And uh, the next year, our, our chance came. And um, there was a, an opportunity, um, uh, funny enough, in the, tw the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, where, where CNN wanted to be visible again. So they were the, the network that was here. They actually put out the live shot of the, the piece of the wall falling at the Brandenburg Gate, which is really the symbol to the whole world that, you know, this, this, was, this was really happening. And, um, and then how does a, an American media, uh, me, an American news channel come back 20 years later and be part of the party and, and, and in a way that where people would say, hey, great, it's great that you're here, you know, like, and, and not be like, why, why are you trying to be part? part of this um and so yeah we we worked we worked really really hard um to make that happen um of course with with our german clients and and then again with with cnn international based in london um but at the end of the day you 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 start to wonder at, at the end of the project are you still holding the controls or were you ever holding the controls in fact uh, it's the client um it's the client's um uh their project it's their idea and if it becomes their project and their idea um there's no stopping it and I so, remember the, yeah, I remember the go beyond. So why don't you just take a minute and just describe it? Yeah, what you wanted to do is um, a lot of uh, um, what you wanted to do is firstly we wanted to to re um, to to sort of remark where the Berlin Wall was in Berlin, and sometimes you can see it because they're like these paving stones which show the original location, but sometimes you can't. There are buildings on top or supermarkets or office space or you know hotels um, and what we did so we used this tape this red um, branded tape go beyond borders and we sort of made this this line visible um, for quite a lot of the um, the the radius of this wall because the wall was actually not a straight line it was like this it was like a loop which encircled west berlin in the middle of of east germany so we made the we made the, the 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 wall line visible again, and our whole project was about honoring the people that had actually come across the wall before the wall came down. So people that really had gone go beyond had went beyond borders, and a lot of the Berlin Wall story is either about um, you know, reunification or um, you know the the sort of conflict and the people that that uh, unfortunately you know were affected or lost their lives or lost their 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 families or the division of the Berlin Wall, but we actually wanted to celebrate these these brave people that kind of overcome the wall. They went over, they went under, they went they tried to go through. Um, some people actually uh, there was a, there was one beautiful case where um, uh, three brothers um, yeah, went over on a on a zip line over the wall and two of them made it over and one of them uh, was stopped by the guards they they cut down the zip line and these two brothers were sitting in the west plotting for i think two years how they were going to go back into the east and pick up their third brother and bring him into the west and they did so with a micro light which they painted in soviet colors and th these stories are incredible they're amazing and it was the first time that cnn actually were, were not um sort of let's say reporting on the now, but actually looking back. Um, and we, we had a lot of, um, there are a lot of partner um, uh, media and broadcasting companies in the, in the family. And they brought out all this old archive footage. And we worked with a Berlin tape artist um, who was actually creating these um, tape art artworks 
on the streets, on the walls, directly in the places where these people had crossed, if they dug a tunnel, if they flew over with a micro light, or if they used a zip line, or if one guy even just jumped into a Jeep and tried to smash his way through it. Um, and all of these stories were then told um, through tape art, these temporary installations. And then we put all these temporary installations on a Google map and you could actually walk around Berlin on the, on the 20th anniversary, uh, do sort of a walking art tour and go from place to place and pick up these QR codes and um, yeah, and, and get into the stories. So um, absolutely uh, something that we sort of verbalized and the client really had to carry on his shoulders and his team's shoulders. And that you um, did with, in partnership with the client again, which I think is the message. Absolutely. Right? That that's really where it is. So that's a big kind of complex idea and you know one of the things that i think that we're learning about about miles lord is that you like ideas you like creativity but you also like to keep it the one slide i like to keep it simple and so i'm going to ask you to tell us about loctite like just give us a <laughs> view of that because it's it's as I, as I look through as i look through all your work i tried to pick things that would that i felt would be representative of who you are and your thinking. And it looks like maybe I did not such a bad job, but I just, I love that. I, lo I love that. Cause it was just such a simple, beautiful <laughs> idea that had me laughing. And I, I, I also, I also really love that because it's the, I, I laughed because it's the first time we, we really didn't try to fight the brief. You know, normally you're like, Oh, can't we, uh, this is so restrictive. And, um, and uh, the client basically said, we I mean, we only had um, four days. Um, we were asked to to pitch, um, and the pitch had 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 done really badly in um, in the test. So we were given, you know, four days to to throw something on top, as they say. And the client gave us a brief, and they gave us this twenty second media space and the brief. And we said, well, if you if you say everything that you want to say, and we time it, we have like that's about seventeen seconds of the of the film. <laughs> And they said, um, yeah. So that's what we did is we, we kind of wrote the, we kind of worked backwards and we said, well, if they have to put all this in, then we only have, we only have space for three second, a three second idea. And, um, and you know, the, 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 the brand is called, you know, it's uh, Loctite 60 seconds. So the joke was like, actually we got 20 seconds for 60 seconds, but we actually have three seconds to make, you know, a, a brand called 60 seconds. And then it, it all came down to like, when you have a minute. So we, so we, we basically got down to the sort of one line, uh, super, super simple um, um, storytelling, you know, where you, you don't actually have a story. You just have a situation which everyone must get. And um, a person will say, you know, I need a minute or sorry, can you give me a minute? And at which point it would just uh, activate um, a gluing scene. <laughs> And they wanted at least four gluing scenes uh, of people. So we would just have, you know, whenever somebody needed to take a break, like for example, the IT guy is trying to put the screen up and the, the boardroom is like uh, waiting and he's like, I need a minute. As soon as they hear this, uh, they're like, well, oh, geez, well, then I'll <laughs> take the time to, you know. And, um, and so it was really, you know, in a way, it was right. kind of like if you did everything the client asked you to do, plus you put on that thing, it was hilarious. Um, and the client was like, can we, can we do a surfboard and a, can we do like a, something wooden and can we do something like, we like, bring it on. It's like the more they asked us to do and the more things we had to somehow cover, the funnier it became. Um, and that was also a lovely, um, um, yeah, yeah, a lovely experience of, of collaboration. I think maybe what's, what stopped it from getting out of control was that we only had 20, 20 seconds to, to tell I, I the story. It. So one last, one last view of, of your work and then we're going to talk about the jury a little bit um just sit back so everybody can see what's oh yeah uh, so the dark sugar. side of sugar that is not a heavy metal band although there is heavy metal in this story For, it, very it, much it's great so give us the give us the, the version of it and let's hear what it's all about yeah, thank you. Thank you for the chance to talk about this. Um, we 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 started this project actually just at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Funny enough, I mean, we had planned to do it, um, but it, it actually ended up um, being an interesting thing because while the world was um, thinking about COVID nineteen, 
we were not paying attention to type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes is, um, I mean, it has killed millions of people um, year, year by year. And everybody is very aware of type 1 diabetes, or they just refer to it as diabetes. This is something that you're born with. Um, this is something that's genetic, potentially. But type 2 diabetes is something that is a result of a poor diet. And so what we wanted to do is use music um, to sort of reach out to young people and just show them that there's two sides to sugar. There's the sweet and happy and lovely, uh, delicious side. And then there's also the dark side. And uh, in order to do that, we, um, we founded a band. I'm not in the band, but we actually created a metal super group out of um, three metal bands that are huge in Germany. Um, one of them is uh, Eskimo Cold Boy. We butter the bread with butter. And then we have two solo artists, which are huge on, on um, as well on the internet. And um, yeah, and they basically, we went to these, to these artists and got permission to create really, really dark and brutal and evil sounding cover versions. Um, so when you go into Spotify and you look up, you know, Harry Styles, Watermelon Sugar, which is probably the, one of the biggest hits uh, of the last two years, you will also see the version from uh, our band, Risen From Shadows. And it's just, a, of course, a reminder that, um, you know, there's a good side and a bad side. And um, maybe things are not as... Um, innocent as they appear. In fact, the food industry is uh, more and more um, guilty of actually hiding sugar and not labeling it correctly, you know, confusing people, putting sugar in health foods. Um, and so uh, in order to do this, we created a music video for the song Sugar by Robin Schultz. We did a very, very heavy makeover of that song and we released it on World Diabetes Day last year. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you allow me to wear this. Um, not because, you know, this is not uh, a thing to, to, to win awards or, or anything like that. This is something uh, to create awareness. Um, and the more people that listen to this music, the more money we raise um, for type 2 diabetes uh, education programs. Well, um, and the listening. great thing is... Wait, so. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, and, and it was also very interesting to, you know, to, when we do these kind of charity projects or social projects, um, we learn. We learned so much. And in this case, we're learning what it's like to be a band in, in a pandemic, a band that has no stage, um, that only has social media. We've right. learned about how music, the number one platform for music promotion in, in the world is Instagram. And most of Instagram is sound off. So bands need to promote their music with pictures. This has also been crazy. We've been learning about algorithms and how algorithms decide maybe what will the next song that'll pop up in your player. Um, it's, it's really been amazing. And of course, learning uh, about the, the younger generations, how they consume, consume media, what's important to them. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a, a, an eye opener for us. Um, it's been a great uh, an experience. And the great thing is it's not a campaign. I mean, it's a campaign, of course, it's a, it's a PSA, it's an awareness campaign, but this music will always be there on all platforms, on uh, Amazon, on, um, on Tidal, on Apple Music, on Spotify, it will always be there and it'll always be, yeah. So everybody the... listen because it gives money to the cause and just look at it. It is so great. It's it's a good, it's such, I love it. So one, one last reactions. question before we wrap. Um, first of all, we're honored to have you on the executive jury. Uh, that's great. You're going to start. We look forward to, to be there. Right? We look forward to what, what the jury comes out with. I think, again, what distinguishes the New York festivals, we are all about the work. That is our focus. It's about the industry. It's about the craft. It's about big ideas. So just give us a, a, a couple of minutes on what are you looking for? What's going to turn Miles Lord on? What should we know? So as I think about putting work in, the next time you're on the executive jury here, what should I be thinking? I always think... Um, w would somebody care, care about this? Um, you know, we, we divide things in, into two piles, things that we care about and things that we don't care about. Funny enough, um, when we, you know, on Instagram, for example, when we like something, there's a heart, you know, um, there is, um, there are, there are things, people are aware of stuff, you know, and the people care about stuff. And so I'm looking for things that make an emotional connection with people. And these can be because they hit a universal human insight and they touch you and you go, wow. Or they can be funny, you know, fun, 
humor uh, connects people and makes people feel warm and, uh, you know, um, and uh, yeah, it pulls people together. So I'm looking for work that touches people that doesn't just shock you or isn't just uh, a flashy thing or, or, for example, doesn't try to use purpose or or virtue signaling just you know to try and get there the cheap way but um things that generally touch people where people actually are somehow immediately familiar with the idea um they have a, an emotional connection to it and i think maybe because i come from south africa we we have um you know so many languages and so many different cultures of people um so many local local african um uh, uh types uh, african people we have so many immigrants like myself we have so many there are so many different types of people in the rainbow nation so many languages so many points of view so many contexts and cultural perspectives that uh, as africans we always look for that universal human truth like what is human what makes us smile when i don't understand the language when i don't understand uh when i've never you know when, when i don't understand the culture that i'm seeing but it still puts a smile on my face it still puts a love in my heart so i'm looking for very very strong insights human insights um and things that people would care about and not necessarily just advertising awards juries that would care about it but the average people out there thank so you. Wow. yeah that's great so miles what can i say Thank you so much for, for being a, an FOD, a friend of David, and, and spending time with me today and sharing your, your thoughts with, with everybody who's going to be watching. You know, again, just quick creativity and innovation, critical. They come together in, in just incredible ways to solve problems. And we just need to think about simplicity, solve the problem. Don't always piss on the brief because sometimes the answer is in the brief. Partner with your clients and win your next pitch with one slide. And we also thank you for, for showing your, your true self. Um, I, I just think the whole notion of having your own NGO is so inspiring and so important as you know, we talk so much about purposefulness and about doing things and way too often we get caught in the advertising of it. And the fact that you've taken this offline, off the stage, moved it with your family into your lives is, is something that I'm taking away and that just inspires me in the biggest way. So Miles, thank you so much. Thank you for being a judge, for being on the executive jury. And we look forward to hearing great things from you, from Berlin. We wish everybody in Germany well and look forward to your getting out of COVID like we have here in New York, kind of more or less. And um, what can I say? On behalf of New York festivals, creativity from the other side, this is David Sable wishing you all well. And again, so honored and happy to have spent this time with Miles Lord, the Managing Creative Director of Service Plan in Berlin. Thank you so much, David. It was uh, really nice to be here. And uh, thank you so much for having me on the, on the jury. I really look forward to seeing some great work this year. As Thanks we. a lot. Thank you.